Hello fellow aspirants this is me Dr Jagdish Shakta and in today's podcast we'll be discussing enlightenment ideas of Ruzo and Kant now a lot of trees have been cut around the world to explain these ideas but i'll be very brief and try to explain very important ideas of do- these two fellows from the point of view of the examination so let's start this is some information about me let us first discuss rousseau uh, this fellow lived in 18th century france he wrote a book now what we'll do is we'll study his books and his chief main ideas but before we start anything else uh, i'll tell you the basic theory what he proposed what he said is suppose this is man in his natural state like the first stone age people so these guys these were good people they did not have any property they had only basic needs basic wants and that if those were satisfied these guys were happy now what happened is slowly slowly as people started living together they started practicing agriculture a concept of private property started like he says the first fellow who put a fence around his agricultural land and said that this is my land he was the originator of private property so this concept of private property started now as more and more people started living together they felt the need of a state because they had some disputes they wanted someone to settle the disputes they wanted someone to take the authority to protect them from other tribes so that is how like tribes and all started so that is the rudimentary formation of the state so here we can see that these all people were bound together in some kind of village or tribe and then they appointed someone amongst them as their leader and this leader would have his own machinery for taxation and all and so that this whole structure is called the state so this is what this is the theory which he proposed today it might seem very ordinary most of you might you might feel that what is new in this even i can think of this so there is nothing new but he was the first one to think all this so and write it down so that's important so in in the discourse on the arts and sciences in this book he said that man is good in nature but he has been corrupted by society and civilization so as i explained that earlier stone age man was all good and happy but as a society and civilization sprang up he became more and more corrupted and conceited then he wrote one more book origin and foundations of inequality in man it builds up on the same theory that initially all were equal but because of private property some got rich some got poor and those inequalities persisted then he wrote this famous book called a social contract in which he said man is born free but everywhere he is in chains even if you look around us you you can find out that when a person is born he is born free but as he grows up there are limitations of society peer pressure duties responsibilities and then everyone everything becomes very narrow and he is bound in chains now these chains are not physical chains but uh, they are stronger than physical chains because it is difficult for a person to go against society caste then he wrote a book on educational reforms called as emily and all these books were revolutionary and earned him lot of hatred from the conservative thinkers he wrote his autobiography called as confessions and this fellow had great influence of two major revolutions in the world that is american revolution and the french revolution the american revolution professed his doctrine by writing this all men are created equal this was this was given by rousseau even the french revolution gave the statement that all men are born free and they have certain inalienable rights given by god so we can see the far reaching influence of this fellow further he denounced the divine right of kingship now we have to remember that during his time there was a monarchy in france which believed that it had it had the divine right to rule all kings usually believed that even in india we had akbar and balban and many kings before and after who believed that they had the divine right of kingship so rousseau said you know guys you do not have the divine right of 
ruling people and then he was against class privileges which meant that in france certain classes had certain privileges like uh, just because they were they belonged to that class like nobility clergy so he said nothing doing you don't have those privileges you have to earn them and then he gave this wonderful call theory called as a the theory of general will this means that if all people decide something then that's the general will of those people and that that has a certain power and it should be respected now democracy is a word, like an example of general will all of us have come together and decided we, that we want democracy we have a parliament we have a constitution so that constitution is our general will that is why our constitution begins with the words we the people he just said that he laid the cornerstone of democracy so this was all about rousseau moving on to the next philosopher that is kant this fellow lived in prussia he spent his entire life in that small town of konigsberg did not move anywhere here and there every day he used to get up in the morning uh, he, used to, he was a professor somewhere and uh, he used to teach there and every day he used to think a lot and write that that's what he did for his entire life and the corpus of his philosophical writings is huge and people even today keep on studying it so he wrote this awesome book that is critic of pure reason then he wrote metaphysics of morals then he wrote critic of practical reason in which he gave the elements of ethics then he again wrote critic of judgment now all this in in combined combination all of these books are about morals ethics and how a person should behave he had an idea for universal moral law and freedom like he says that there should be a universal there is a universal moral law and people should follow that he rejected extreme materialism and he gave a kind of a moral code of conduct for rulers and statesmen to follow that pe- that the ruler should follow this kind of moral code of con- code of conduct he believed in a strong monarchy and he believed that the state is a necessary evil because to implement all this moral law freedom you need a state for him god was an impersonal force and he supported deism uh, to explain in simple language this kind of philosophy believes that god will not interfere in day to day life day to day life or the human affairs are governed by cause and effect like and certain eth- principles of ethics so that is called deism if you have to understand in simple hindi it is kar bhala so ho bhala this is a kind of ethic and his ideas promoted nationalism and emotional integration of people in europe prominently and he gave this one classic concept called as categorical imperative now this is a very difficult term but the concept is easy now suppose you were to stand at a signal so this is the signal this is the signal over here this is uh, this is another road and you are standing here somewhere at this point and the signal is turned red but uh, you need not stop right if there is no one around you can just go so what stops you at the signal why should you for stop at the signal because if you imp- if you s- imagine that today you are not obeying the signal if tomorrow everyone does not obey the signal then what might happen maybe next day you are not obeying the signal ju- just for go- you are just going here and then someone else uh, a truck comes and da- bashes you or some day you are obeying the signal and uh, moving here but then a truck is not obeying the signal and then he just crushes you so that means if everybody starts not following rules then that is harmful for us so in the long term interest of the entire society people should follow rules so this is a simple explanation of categorical imperative to give one more example if we walk on the zebra crossing suppose and we want people to stop their bikes while we are walking on the zebra crossing and suppose we are on the bike we might want to evade that rule and just cross but then today we are like the person is young and he can like easily cross but over a period of time when one becomes old 
that time these rules are very important because unless those rules are there we cannot quickly pass through that cross that road so this only suggests that if you want your own benefit and societal benefit then you have to believe in like implement such some rules so that is this categorical imperative i hope this was helpful if you have any issues please write in the comments i'll reply as soon as possible thank you have an awesome day